Welcome everybody to the Riga Business School's Bottom Line Studio. This is the last episode of this year. The next one's going to be in the second part of January. But today is going to be really special because we have in the studio Kaspar Srvoškalns, which has actually, who has quite a lot of titles. So this is what I found in your uh, LinkedIn profile, uh, how you call them. So uh, the direct Director General at Investment and Development Agency of Latvia, in Latvian known as LIA. Uh, also, the member of the management board at Freeport of Ventspils Authority, the member of the supervisory board at Latvia's Sporta Pedagogies Academy, and <laughs> the executive MBA student, the current student. At also, the true, also true, yes. Also, everything's true. <laughs> everything, so far, everything's true. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, and I want to ask you, Kaspers, how would you describe yourself in a couple of sentences? Yeah, that's a, a pretty good chance, but actually, uh, because of the, I don't know, executive MBA uh, studies here, we, on the leadership uh, skills, we have to do this uh, quite quite a lot. So I describe myself as a um, mm, uh, pretty goal-oriented leader, and uh, it, it means that uh, I can... Uh, I can see the vision where we have to go. I can see the, the big picture how to get there. And uh, I can probably gather around uh, a team uh, with me to get to that achievement. Okay, and is this something that you became over time or is it something that you think you were inherently born with? Nah. Like this mentality or? No, it's a, that is called probably, I don't know, life journey. Obviously you have some kind of uh, properties that you uh, you are born with some 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 set of uh, skills maybe, and and uh, most of the skills actually you learn through life. But uh, I would explain that till uh, maybe till I was twenty eight, twenty yeah till twenty eight. I was not that uh, um, not that I, I I was very goal oriented, but not that much of the leader. Uh, it was uh, whatever whatever it takes uh, we have to get to that achievement and no matter what I didn't think maybe too much on uh, on a team uh, how do we get there on uh, just get, get to the bottom line of that or, or at least uh, to get or overachieve the goal and later on after after maybe that was 20 27 28 something like that m multiple things happen um, one thing, uh, I became a father. That definitely gave a lot of perspective uh, how to be a leader in the professional life. Because you have to start to manage uh, a lot of, and you have to start to care about more than uh, may maybe just a couple of people, but still you have to devote uh, the attention and you have to manage and you have to figure out how to be a good father, how to still uh, perform the work and such, etc. Et so that was def definitely uh, some kind of turning point that you can uh, be, a, be, a, be, a, be a manager uh, if, uh, at least for me, it was uh, after I became father, not, not before that. And then a uh, second thing happened. Uh, it was mostly uh, on, almost at the, the same time. I uh, started to sail. I'm a professional, on a professional level, semi-professional, whatever we call that, but skipper on a sailboat, on a racing boat. Skipper. Skipper, yes. I, I have a ocean license, uh, so uh, I'm allowed to cross the Atlantic, etc. But uh, but the most important part is not about the license. The most important part is to manage the team on the sailboat as a captain. Uh, you, we have 12 people team, and you have to go through any storm. And, uh, and this is actually a very good uh, example how to uh, figure out that you cannot achieve all the goals by yourself. Mm. You have to rely on a team and if you want to do it multiple years uh, So you have to be good leader. So the next year the team wants to sail with you. Otherwise, we s they say no we want a new skipper or or You have to recruit uh, each year a new team to go for competition mm. It sounds like until like the age 28 27 you had the responsibility you took on responsibility of uh, leading your own life and then you had responsibility for others like you became a father and then you became responsible yeah. let's say leader for people yeah okay. something like that 
Pretty cool. I actually asked my brother, Klaus Indriksson, okay. who is also your... Curveball coming. Course <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> But uh, he thinks about you. Okay. But, but, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not, I guess, what you imagine. But uh, Kaspers is a great leader and a problem solver. All listeners for sure have heard about many of his achievements in LIA, and he is showing some the same qualities in RBS Executive MBA studies. He is always up for a good laugh, and from our Executive MBA group, he has the best stories for sure. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and uh, I'm very looking forward to the next boat trip. Uh, yeah. So you're going to be a captain there as well? <laughs> yes, I, uh, we, we, took, um, we took a boat trip here on, uh, with, with our, uh, our class on, uh, on Daugava, mm -hmm. just uh, four hours in Chile or something like that. So yeah, and that was six of us. So <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> leader <me> here. <laughs> awesome. And also the last quote is that uh, I believe Kasper's success stories will show up in the news media articles for many years to come. One of his side gigs <laughs> is being a member of supervisory board in Latvia's Sporta Pedagogis Academy. It's true. And yeah, exactly, <laughs> we established that. But uh, <laughs> uh, he would like to he love. He would love to hear more about. Uh, your greatest like learning like how is that going so the greatest learning experiences and challenges by filling this role since you've uh, been in that role what are the like the challenges or what you've learned so far wow uh, okay uh, i have uh, previously never been on a supervisory board supervisory mm -hmm. board uh, so um, it steers and guides uh, the management team Therefore, normally on the supervisory board, you search for experience. Mm -hmm. In uh, in our case, uh, on uh, LSPA, uh, that's the Latin abbreviation on, on the Latvian uh, Sport Academy. Academy, uh, now we uh, most, I, I feel the role uh, on, uh, on business perspective, on uh, what can else be achieved uh, from mostly from business perspective on, on that uh, uh, university so that actually is, is is the role that I fulfill there I'm not uh, acad academic I'm not, not a PhD I don't look at that but I, I look at how can we commercialize the potential uh, sports science science uh, within in, in the startups and what can we do more uh, for that uh, in, in that perspective mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, the hard part till now mostly I figure out and then I drive the execution. That part I just can tell what it looks like is the perspective there and what could be achieved. But then the management team of, of that uh, academic institution, they have to uh, achieve it. And that's, 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 the, that's the difference. Hmm. And talking about your learning experiences and what would you say is your maybe most impactful learning experience that you've had in your life. So maybe I know you mentioned like you became becoming a father, like you mm -hmm. learn a lot about being a leader, if I'm mm -hmm. paraphrasing that correctly. Yep. But is there something else that maybe changed you fundamentally or how you view the world, your perspective? It's, it's, it's hard to say that it's just, uh, just on a positive and a negative side. That's on a positive side, and on the negative side, maybe it's the biggest fail that I, I, I learned a lot, but I'll start with the positive and then go in, in the negative. Additional thing, what, hap what happened actually in, uh, I was uh, 20 something, I was 23, I think so. I was 23, so a long time ago. And, uh, and uh, I, I got married at 23. And definitely uh, my wife is the best team player. Hmm. Uh, that this is uh, I would never ever be able to achieve that much at first uh, as an individual and later on as a, as a leader and uh, if I would not have a, such a support and again so I was lucky uh, I just uh, I don't know lucky marriage uh, but on the biggest fails if we look at the biggest fails then uh, I would say um, uh, 2000 that would happened in 2012, 2013, something around that time when I was uh, on a private sector uh, and working in 
I was also a part owner of a translation agency, and uh, we established a spin-off of that company. Uh, and it was a it was a startup for a semi-automatic translation uh, process. At that time, we uh, figured out how to uh, how to translate the web page not automatically via Google Translate or Tilde engine, but uh, but semi-automatically. So the idea is if there is a content management system, you update the content management system in whatever language and all the translators that, that translate into whatever professionally for big brands, for blue chip companies in, in the world, they receive that update that they have to fill out these two sentences that are added to the, I don't know, worldwide uh, some kind of web page. And, uh, and we figured that out, how, how to do it, how to give the automatic uh, uh, notice, how to send to those translators, how to figure out if they're busy or not, and then if they're busy then to send it to the next one because the multinational client, he cannot wait. We figured out how to do the money transfer uh, worldwide, so to source uh, uh, relatively cheap somewhere in the native languages, uh, but, uh, but, but to maintain the quality. And uh, it was huge mumbo jumbo, and at uh, at that point I couldn't, uh, um, I didn't focus enough on on that. And like three or four years later, uh, big uh, there was a big uh, buyout of uh, such startup from different country uh, to one of the multinational translation agencies and on the after, actually the software agency uh, bought that startup that had this same idea two years later than we started. Mm. And, uh, and I, so obviously uh, this is uh, probably the, the biggest fail because that was probably multi-million exit that we missed. And uh, because we, we couldn't, uh, and, and I myself uh, are definitely a big part of that problem, at that time I, I couldn't understand that the focus on, on stuff, what you really want to do is everything. So whenever you are on, on something, you focus 100%, 100%. It was, we did it, but it was like on the side every time, every, and it was, we didn't de designate enough separate time for that. We didn't have specifically one just some kind of day or week for just that to boosting the startup idea. And uh, we, we, we couldn't, we, we mixed between the classical business, there was a translation agency and the new spin-off. And this is uh, de definitely a, a, a fail that uh, that I learned most of that. That focus is, is, is king. Focus is everything. If if you want to focus, uh, if you want to achieve something, you have to focus uh, on one specific uh, issue uh, for some specific time. But the switching between a lot of stuff is uh, is too complicated. Okay, and that actually, I want to move from what you just said into our like topic of building a business, and so focus is everything. But if you're, let's say, an employee in a company and you can only, let's say, work in a company like part-time, do you see that as a, let's say, a viable option? Is it something like worth doing and worth spending your time on if you know that you can't really maybe invest yourself 100% into it and you can't always be on top of like the news and in that sense, do you think... Uh, you know, it's, it's not that uh, you designate uh, all the energy to one thing, but uh, you, when, when you designate uh, an energy, it's all of energy you have. So it means that uh, even if it, you can uh, uh, figure it out, you have one hour for that particular problem each day a week, you designate that one hour and you're 100% okay. on that hour. It, it, it's, yeah, so, so if you work for the company and uh, you also want to start the startup, then you designate at least uh, one hour each day or something like that every day to solve some kind of problems there until you can figure out that you can designate more time and then you maybe go from the full time to half time in that company, boost the startup and at some point you go, I don't want to work for the company, I would just want to work for the startup. But but when you figure out, it, it's it's the complicated part is if you are doing something and when whenever you have free time, you never have a free time, <laughs> yeah. so you have to make time, and this is uh, this is definitely and that is focus. That you focus. Okay, this is definitely on my agenda. Yes, I cannot. Uh, the same for for me now. I, I I have to fill out three different roles, the same stuff. But then I figure out. Okay, this day I'm going to focus on that. There's this this this, and and I'll go through all of that, and I'll I can manage 
I'll uh, I'll do it whatever uh, whatever is, is is needed, and I'll I'll be able to multitask in that perspective. But just the multitasking is not just you do everything at the same time, but you just designate specific time. So it's more the idea of it's not that you focus just your time into it. It's also that you actually focus while you're doing that, and then you yeah. do it consistently. Yes. Okay. Yeah, now I get it. Wow. That's a uh, I'll have to think about that. That's a grain <laughs> of thought. <laughs> but uh, like moving on, so for some of the viewers that may not know what uh, Leah does, so just uh, just uh, okay. also English. So the Investment and Development Agency of Latvia. What's first of all? What's the mission of Leah? What does it like in broad terms attempt to do or help with? Mm -hmm. uh, the mission of Leah is uh, to uh, provide uh, the best possible um, state support service to the entrepreneurs mm -hmm. with, uh, with focusing on uh, how to boost their productivity uh, and export. That's the, that's the mission. So we have to, we're, we are the agency who provides support to the companies, to the entrepreneurs, starting from idea uh, up to uh, relatively, obviously Latvia, we don't have big companies in Latvia at all. There's, yeah, on the, if we look at the world stage, Latvia, we don't have any really big companies, but uh, but obviously from from Latvian perspective, we start from idea, from student, up to up to big big corporation who expands around the world. Okay, and talking about like the services, like okay, so you help companies, but from the services that you offer, you help with in practically, how do you help? Mm -hmm. Like, what are the exact services? Yeah, we start. Uh, it depends uh, on the uh, life cycle where that uh, entrepreneur or company is at. So we start from uh, idea with hackathons, with uh, mini MBA studies, with agile, scrum, prints, etc., etc. We teach that whole how to build the business. Then uh, later on, we, we figure on the incubation phase, then you incubate. So it means we give grants, the grants is free money, but uh, obviously it was uh, European strings attached, but anyway, we, we give grants so the co can can the new entrepreneur can build the first prototype, uh, can buy the first uh, machines uh, to uh, actually produce something, um, or licenses or software license depends on what, whatever is needed. Then uh, we go into the next stage uh, when there's a company operational to support the sales. So we we give uh, different type of uh, consultations. We have twenty plus offices around the world to support the export markets. So if you want to sell your product, and realistically, Latvia is too small of a market. Latvia is a great test market, but it's not a market uh, that you want to build a company for. You want to build a company for European Union, that's 400 million market, bigger market than US. Uh, it's easier market than China. Not bigger, particularly, but easier uh, market chi than, than than China, and uh, and obviously uh, because Latvia is part of the European Union, we have access to that market better access than U.S. And let's say in more practical terms. So if I'm a company and I'm thinking, okay, I want my company to grow. I want to maybe develop a company. When I go to LIA, are you gonna? help me with like consulting are you going to actually aid me in let's say the hackathon you're going to help me choose which hackathons to go to or like the development plan so you're going to actually help me write it like hands-on or just say okay so these are like step by steps and this is what you should do and like you maybe give a draft and then you tell me what should be improved like how hands-on is it how hands-on is like actual services because i'm myself personally not sure okay we will definitely not help you to write the business plan because yeah. if we help you to write the business plan, then you're not an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but uh, but obviously all, all uh, uh, besides that, yes, we will provide you uh, um, uh, learning courses how to write the business plan. What is the expectations? We will contact you with uh, Altums or uh, acceleration programs like uh, build it uh, uh, commercial uh, commercial commercial reactor or um, well the accelerators like why start of wise guys whatever we have we have uh, we will prepare you to enter to that acceleration before that we'll, we'll give you grant that means 
that the money to, to create um, no seed money pretty much to create a prototype and uh, so you can actually have and, and show that you have a working model and uh, and this is uh, so it means obviously we expect the, the individual or entrepreneur or the company they are ready to invest time to develop the business it's not going to be like we, we some time ago we had that quite a lot now it's better but like uh, a company says okay I want to export to 15 countries, uh, my marketing budget is zero, but state you have to provide me support, and uh, I expect just uh, that uh, you provide me with deals. That's never gonna happen. State cannot provide you with deals. We can only, what we can do is, we can create an event where potentially you can find deals, but the networking part is, is on entrepreneur. Uh, the sales pitch is on entrepreneur. We can provide the learning part on how to do the sales pitch, but the sales pitch was, is on entrepreneur and because we cannot discuss on uh, business specifics. You know? For example, if we take a, whatever, uh, I don't know, IT company and they provide uh, coding, uh, like a, a sourcing for whatever company, they just write code in JavaScript for whatever. Then uh, the, if we go to the specific events where they are big multinationals searching for uh, subcontractors for JavaScript, they can only negotiate on a price per hour. We cannot negotiate on a price per hour because that, then, then we say yes, but uh, this can be done and then we have to negotiate back to the whatever that company. No, that's, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't work. The, we can get the company in the same room with the, with the money, let's say so, who's ready to, to buy the service. But to negotiate the deal, that's the that, that the comp companies uh, because it's business risk. You, hmm. you have they, they have to take the risk. Hmm. You just help them if they're not sure of something. So like give that let's say framework, give that maybe knowledge that they need. Knowledge, to develop yes, to knowledge. Then yeah. to s state support and financial support to get to that mm -hmm. point that they MVP. actually yes yeah. MVP. Uh, even more, uh, at least in the in the incubation phase for first three years, they can get grants to uh, boost up the businesses for for machines. Mm -hmm. So they can take uh, I don't know if the 3D printer costs I don't know two thousand euros, then half of that we grant. So mm -hmm. you have you get to everything fifty percent off. Okay. Yeah, to any any deal you get fifty percent off. That's oversimplifying. So you are having actually competitive advantage at the beginning because you have state support against the company who does not. But the Europe allows that until uh, it's 200,000 euros, because then they say it's small entrepreneurship boosting. That's okay, that doesn't break the market. Mm -hmm. So up to that le limit, uh, pretty much we have on uh, export uh, activities, on different incubation activities, whatever is needed for, so for, business, uh, for businesses to grow. And what are the let's say main criteria so let's say I'm a business or maybe I'm an aspiring entrepreneur I don't have a business idea yet maybe I'm just you know don't have a lot of knowledge just maybe a fresh student like what are the criteria of when an entrepreneur in Latvia should consider going to Elia like uh, what's the criteria if there is any or is it both for like large businesses you only mentioned up to like uh, 200,000 but below that's, that. uh, that's one specific, specific right? problem, but, uh, but we have also uh, the 10 million program. So if you're a large business, you focus on that. But, okay. but if, you are, if we focus on uh, who's going to watch this, so mostly students. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, that's, uh, I would say a good idea is to start with uh, Hackathon or Idea Cup. Uh, so probably it's very good if you want to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you have an idea. Maybe it's not very focused. Maybe it's not formalized, but you figure out because entrepreneur is a, an individual who can spot an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you spot an opportunity, there might, you can do this better and there's a market for that. There's a need for that. You don't know how to do it. You don't know exactly how to fix the problem, but you see this can be better. Mm -hmm. This can be improved. Uh, and then with this, uh, you can go to the hackathon or or idea cup to pitch the idea. Hey, I have an idea to, I don't know, uh, make something out of something. Obviously, currently, if we look at uh, most perspective ideas, then uh, they are in uh, specific sectors where Latvia has uh, quite a lot of scientific excellence, where you can 
have a science scientist to validate your idea and actually to support you to get to that that idea for example like uh, we we have defined five five specific sectors uh, bio economy that includes food uh, wood whatever is connected to that then there's uh, smart materials photonics that's everything that is kind of connected to electronics actually then there's smart city solutions that's apps and uh, whatever is uh, you use scooters and so on that's that's uh, smart city then there is uh, ICT or in ICT as a horizontal that anything nothing can be done uh, actually without an ICT involvement now and what did I miss biomedicine biomedicine is again where we have scientific excellence on biomedicine field of biomedicine and then uh, there's a lot of uh, companies create there's a huge market on, on farm big pharma and then there's a, a lot of opportunities between uh, how to how to boost that. So and also the hackathons are hosted by Leah. Yes. Okay. So I have We're an hosted, idea. Hosted, but co-financed. But yes, we are involved in that involved. together with the startup community, like Tech Tech Hub, with Tech Chill, with uh, um, Startin, with uh, Ladban. We host a lot of activities together. So the main way to get like the Leah's attention on my prospective company or idea is go to one of those hackathons. And uh, then let's say Leah will evaluate, does this have potential? If yes, we'll both help you with the, let's say, knowledge that you need and also the expertise mm -hmm. that you said, like those five promising sectors. That is, that is one, 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 one option. Yeah. Other option is uh, obviously we have this uh, entrepreneurship portal that's uh, business.gov.le mm -hmm. where you can log in with Google or Facebook account, the Meta account or whatever, and then uh, then just fill out your profile. I'm this, I, I'm interested in that, and then you get the news, whatever is coming up. This is, a, again, something that uh, everybody can do. So business.gov.le. Well, and uh, in this uh, great uh, podcast opportunity, you also can drop me an email and I'll uh, forward the, that to the right person. So drop me an email and uh, with the idea, and uh, I'll, I'll forward to, to, to the right uh, department, uh, wherever they will I'll quickly evaluate pretty much where is that, and then forward that to the, to the right person, yeah. Awesome. So both hackathons and just through yes. the, the website. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And uh, also, so let's talk about why starting a business in Latvia specifically. Mm -hmm. So describe like the current environment, the business environment that's in Latvia. Mm -hmm. That's like a general term, but you can like define it how you want to go into it. Yeah, this is a uh, part of my master thesis. So, mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's good because uh, obviously I we, we we write together with uh, so me and uh, well this uh, we write on uh, master thesis on how to use uh, artificial intelligence and uh, digital transformation to actually uh, boost. Uh, uh, Leah uh, side of the business, let's say so, and uh, and 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 but always a big part of that is uh, the Latvian general environment, uh, and then we if we look uh, at at the Latvia from bird's eye view on on world competition, then currently there's a multiple multiple international uh, evaluation uh, platforms and agencies state Latvia is number one most startup friendly country in the world yes and uh, that's mostly because we're on the legislation for startups nobody has that elastic legislation for startups uh, so to to be able to receive a welcome package on, a, on a, if you establish the startup you can get the welcome package from the state uh, for salaries uh, up to 200,000 euros Subsidized, basically. Subsidized, yes, subsidized. Uh, you can get a uh, startup visa if you're somebody outside of European Union. You can get startup visa for you and for your team to start a startup. Then uh, you can get uh, um, on a, on a Latvian level. We are one of the most uh, best di digital infrastructures. So if you look at the, for startups, one of the key issues is to have everything running smoothly. So on digital infrastructure, on the hardware, uh, uh, we have everything is good. Everything on that is, is, is we have op fiber optics, 90% of households have broadband connection. That's uh, world level criteria. We are number three 
in the world on mobile data usage. So if you want to test an, an app on uh, that would work without Wi-Fi, but on mobile data, then Latvia is one of the best ways where to test it because we're not afraid to use mobile data. Everywhere else in the world, okay, not everywhere else, but most of the world, uh, they are searching for Wi-Fi. If you want to use the app, you, they're searching for Wi-Fi uh, because the mobile data is expensive. And uh, Latvia is way ahead of that. Mm -hmm. The data is cheap and nobody cares about uh, Wi-Fi. So it's easy to spot any Latvian because he's the guy or girl who's not searching for Wi-Fi in a new hotel. They don't care. And, uh, and this is, uh, again, is, uh, something. And then if we look at the public sector, we actually, from, the, from that perspective, we're very, very digital public sector. And how that helps, uh, obviously, from one side to establish the business, uh, EIDs are now available, no band visa is available. There's a lot of instruments now available. Almost everything is digitally available. And uh, it means that uh, to running an operation, not being always here is easy. Uh, that, and, and this is one. And step two is availability to open data. We are, uh, we are from the public sector, we're getting more and more on to, pub to publish and open data. And that's again a uh, huge uh, benefit for startups to test their idea on that data, how that would work and, and how that uh, would align and so on and so on. So the digital infrastructure and digital public sector, uh, startup law, uh, startup welcome package of 200K. And uh, among that, we are among the OECD countries, we ranked number two on the tax systems. So. For a startups to, to, to start a small company, it's uh, it's very easy, and uh, and that's uh, that that's uh, actually and that all that package is not just evaluated by us, but uh, Silicon Valley is saying that Latvia is currently doing the better, because those indexes are located there, mm -hmm. we are ahead of Estonia, so we're happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, obviously we have to run fast because otherwise all the countries are running fast, and we have still to 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 run fast. But but uh, the biggest biggest issue is. Uh, that's that, that's funny what we see the latvian guys and that's also okay uh and girls uh they are going away to establish startups but the uh, other world is coming to us to establish the startup and to relocate startup here and that's that's uh and that's i, I would say very very normal process because uh, when you are somewhere i don't know and you look my market is in germany and i want to focus on the germany or us then I go there to, to try try out my idea. But uh, the, we'll have probably a bigger problem later on because now if we establish the startup you, up to a couple of million revenues, it's fine. But then uh, to get, get to the next series round investment, that is an issue because uh, the big funds are in London, in like U in UK and then in US. And that's again, that's, that's definitely going to be a a next step problem that we have to boost uh, and, and make it more easy and more available big funds uh, mm -hmm. also here. So, uh, so the funds would invest and not take the startups away to UK or whatever, but uh, to uh, be located here, to invest in startups here and to allow them grow here. Okay, and this is maybe a more bold question. So let's say I'm a student, I just maybe graduated, and why would I choose Latvia? Like, what are the competitive advantages of starting a business, like a startup in Latvia? Like, you just mentioned a lot of them, yes. but like the most practical for, let's say, a new entrepreneur. So why should I start a business specifically in Latvia, mm -hmm. maybe a startup, compared to like maybe other nearby European countries? Mm -hmm. Like, what are the competitive advantages that they don't have? But if you start in Latvia, you do have, like you mentioned, the welcome package. It's not sure if they're also in other countries. Yeah, some welcome packages there, but uh, definitely the the startup law is the best that we have. That's hundred mm -hmm. percent access to the four hundred million market. That's so it's kind of simple. Startup law. It's it's kind of you can move fast as a business. Yes. In that sense. Yes. If if you're a startup, the the government helps you to uh, to move fast. In, in that perspective and that's uh, and you can pay the part of the salary as an option to as as option so the team can can 
be paid in, in uh, as part of the salary as a startup options. That means that they actually uh, are paid in the future value. So when you exit, then they get paid. Hmm. But they uh, obviously some salary you have to pay as a salary, but some you can pay in options. And then you have on the startup package, on, uh, on the welcome package on top of that. And then, uh, so yeah, so access to the market, startup law, including with all the grants that is there, and uh, digital infrastructure and, and, and uh, public uh, op open data. So this is the, the, the top three qualities that we see for the startups that they, uh, they, are, uh, they are interested in. Okay. Awesome. And uh, now like uh, when we got so starting a business in Latvia specifically, I want to ask maybe some general resources that when you start doing something you should go to. So there's like the different stages and maybe you have like first the business idea and everything. Maybe you went to the hackathon. What are the maybe like the resources that are available for starting startups in Latvia? If that's not like, I don't know, if you can't even say that, like if it's not confidential or anything. Like, so, is, you mean what? So, so uh, you're going through like the different stages, maybe at each of those like starting stages, where do you get help from? So Leah, right? You maybe derive information from other sources. There's maybe some websites you can go on, maybe some, uh, I don't know, seminars that are really, let's say, helpful. So what are some like general resources that's like a rule of thumb? Okay, so if you start a startup in Latvia, you should go here, you should go here, you should go here. Okay. In that sense. Okay, then uh, the way if you start to get, get a startup in Latvia, if you, it is one of these five sec sectors that I mentioned, yes, mm -hmm. then uh, you start with uh, winning uh, Idea Cup, you get maybe first uh, 10,000 euros as yeah. a grant to establish your idea. Then you join our incubator uh, and you incubate your idea, so you grow a prototype, MVP, you, uh, you grow that, that MVP together with some kind of university, so uh, with the scientists, so, so you have to validate that you have an MVP ready and, uh, and it's working and it's maybe you can patent it, depends on what, what is that. Then uh, the and next... Incubators, is it like, I don't know, can you mention certain incubators that you should go to or recommend? Or? Currently in all the regions we have each in each region we have an incubator mm -hmm. and Riga actually is uh, a missing part but we are now building uh, together with the university is a new we have a technology business center currently located in RTU uh, but uh, but we're for the, for the, during the next year we'll build something big and strong for next seven years so uh, so that's that that's gonna be uh, here in Riga everywhere else in, in big cities in Latvia we have an incubator so that's designated area like we work or whatever uh, we, we call that but uh, but the, the, where you can go there's a community you get a lot of knowledge there from the community how to join how to write the papers etc etc also from our employees but also from the community also from entrepreneurs who are there for two years and they have now oh yes if you need this then you go there if you need that then you go there and um, so after the incubator uh, you should go to or maybe mid 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 midterm incubator, you you should look at the acceleration programs, like uh, then you get uh, venture capital in, and then you uh, when you scale scale bigger, and uh, after that then uh, again you should look to uh, to uh, our representative offices to 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 validate with big multinationals the need for your product. So the meetings with BMW, Airbus, whatever. Uh, to show them we have this and you definitely need that and to meet with their R&D. Then they say, okay, yes, this looks promising. We want, to, we want to know more. So multinational. So there's venture capitalists, maybe local. And then yes. you go multinational. Uh, yeah, Actually. you go multinational for the clients. You go, don't go for the money. Mm -hmm. We recommend to go for the client. Get okay. the first multinational interest, express of interest. Uh, that they, if you finish this and if, if it works, then they would be ready to buy something. Then with that, then you can uh, can start to go to the events like we sponsor uh, Slush or a different that type of events. You can go and on the world stage and pitch that you already have uh, something something ready. Hmm. And uh, is there maybe a website, maybe somewhere? So all that you mentioned, 
some websites that you can find more information on. So you actually for startups, apply. I would say um, Startup Latvia is uh, is, is pretty Latvia. good. Yeah, pretty good uh, website where you can see all the steps and all the events and how that uh, goes uh, uh, in each other. I recommend also our partners the starting. Uh, they also have very good information mm -hmm. on, on how, how how to go about. Um, what else is there? Tech Tech Hub is uh, is a great community there. So so that is again something that that uh, I, I strongly recommend. Um, what else? I've definitely forgot about some somebody, and I'll get some. Uh, <laughs> Angry messages, <laughs> right? I forgot. But uh, yeah, so 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 maybe I I am sorry I, I forgot some some of them. But but actually, the startup community in Latvia is quite friendly. So if you find reach out to anybody, either it's from Lia or from any uh, startup organization, they will guide you. They will say, okay, whatever you have. Oh, this is you're not ready for this. You need to go there, and then that's, mm. they they are very well versed in what Leah has to offer in that startup community sense, and they send startups to us when they are ready, and we send start international startups to them when they are searching for community. Like startup startup is coming. Can I find an expert in whatever we had? Where can I find an expert in? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't know some specific coding language. Oh yeah, no idea. But we know we, when we started starting, we like, hey, this is a question. You probably, if somebody knows an answer, you definitely know an answer. And then uh, they uh, they uh, they figure out, hey, we have this uh, problem. They have a funding. They need an expert, and then they they, they can they can that figure out. So the community wise, I would say, it's uh, it's good. Okay. Great. So the websites that you mentioned and probably others that you maybe can't recall right now, yes. you can find everything. There's is like, it's a new site for both startups and also like businesses that are not, not really startups, but just you know small business. It's like for everybody or yeah, this is purely a premium startups. startup. If you're scalable, mm -hmm. uh, if you're not scalable, if you are on a uh, on a classical business, um, then uh, I would say. Um, the same business go LV definitely Altum Altum dot LV they have quite a lot of uh, uh, different type of uh, loans for starting the businesses mm -hmm. uh, so they are very welcome and, and uh, they consult a lot and, and so on but the, the system is we help the companies with the uh, with the these lectures to create a business case and to write a uh, business plan specifically. A focus that later on Altum would accept that plan. So it's not just a plan; it's already made that we know that if Altum will look at this, all they that there's going to be a negotiation. But at least all the checks are there, and then uh, then that's 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 our our, our part of the deal. Uh, for classical businesses, a lot of uh, stuff is happening in different type of uh, associations, um, like uh, metalworking association, the electronics association, IT cluster. They are uh, they are uh, also an uh, available well the, the the information where you can get more information. Are you part of this or not? Or then the, this is something that they 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 work quite quite okay. Obviously, uh, in in more general uh, point of view, the Latvian Chamber of uh, Commerce is uh, is boosting a, a business. They they mostly uh, they do a lot of stuff, but uh, but obviously together with the Chamber of Commerce, what we see is uh, we, we join forces to lobby uh, interests uh, uh, of uh, entrepreneurship. So I don't know that a couple of years ago, maybe ten, maybe fifteen, uh, the mindset of the Latvian average Latvian people was the business is bad. The business is the it means that you buy. Buy low, sell high, and that's that bad. And uh, and and now it's it's better. Now the the overall the mindset of uh, of the Latvian people is that uh, business is uh, giving back to the community via taxes. Some sometimes like we're not there yet on on society level. We don't understand maybe that well the corporate social responsibility. But we're growing there. So the Chamber of Commerce is working quite a lot on that those those topics so uh, on, on the government level and uh, on society level uh, the society would support that, that we need businesses because they are paying 
taxes and, and because they pay taxes we can have good schools, we can have, uh, I don't know, decent uh, medical service, we can have good roads. Without the businesses, nothing of that would happen. And talking about like the mind behind businesses, so I also found that you were an entrepreneur yourself also back in the day yes. of Easy Paint. Yes, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I saw that, yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, so my question is one of the last ones. Why should one become an entrepreneur? Wow. Like, why is it I think this is, uh, I honestly maybe think it's not a, a question of why. It is a question of uh, you cannot, uh, if, if you have a drive, you cannot not be an entrepreneur. Mm. If you have drive, you have, for example, for me, I have during that like easy pain thing and, and later on, I am, I know I cannot, I'm terrible if we, I am alone. I do not perform well. I, I need maybe a small team that we figure out and then, uh, and, I, and I have a sparring partner to bounce the ideas around, figure out what would be the best and, and so on and, and then, then to drive each other. But uh, I know a lot of uh, businesses and, and entrepreneurs actually that they are best if if they uh, have a target. They they know this. Uh, I know a guy who created a drone company here in Latvia. He was alone, figured out everything by himself and and uh, and crazy and and went to the sales pitch trip for the first clients in uh, in Germany where he was stationed uh, to sell the drone. Uh, to mm, what's the, the correct English word for that but to uh, somehow uh, put the chemicals by the help of the drone on the vineyard because the vineyard is uh, in, in mountain so it's complicated to do it by by hand it's impossible to do it by machine they are now doing it in uh, Mosul region in Germany by chopper chopper is very uh, I would say harsh to the plants, and so he figured out that uh, I'll put some uh, like like uh, chemicals under the drone and and uh, and put it um, on the vineyard. Fantastic idea! Uh, and so we we don't have wine, and we don't have mountains, mm. but we had an entrepreneur who figured out that he doesn't need wine, ni neither mountains. Just he had an idea that this is needed and drove uh, forward by himself. And that's uh, that 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 is the. You cannot stop it. That's the that's that's the drive, and uh, we need to teach our kids to have more and more ambition. And this is uh, this is something that uh, we we need to go more and more. That's not the one generation. That's multiple generations. But we need to to have this uh, this drive more and more in in our society. And probably like about this ambition drive, I think most of at least business students at some point of like aspiring entrepreneurs, they've had like this thought. Okay, I want to be like one of the greats, right? So one of the most like powerful people in business. But uh, what are maybe some of the skill sets or skills that you've noticed that are, that one should focus on? So let's say I'm uh, maybe just entering like university, just ended university and I want to like become an entrepreneur soon, but I can't really do that now because I have like time constraints, like I have other folk things I'm focused on. What skills should I focus on meanwhile? To actually, when I actually do decide to go that path, I'm kind of ready, you know. Because I'd imagine building a business, especially in the beginning, like first it's a lot of like planning, developing, and then it's a lot of sales. That's how I imagine it. Because you yes. have to sell your idea. What are some skills, maybe of that sort? Yeah, but uh, and you can like sales or not like sales. That depends. You can, you can. I don't know. I, I would say the the number one is never give up. That's that's number one. So because it's n not gonna be an easy whatever whatever is happening, not gonna be an easy. At least at least that is for sure. And uh, and then uh, whatever whatever skills you are lacking, you either can can learn yourself. Is it sales, finances? I don't know processes or de depends on on each personality, or uh, or you can outsource. So do not be afraid that you can buy the skills that you are not having. But you need to recognize that I'm terrible at this, mm. that's fine. I can buy that skill on the market as an employee or whatever, but uh, but this is something that I like to do, this is something I, I'm, I can do, 
And this is something that I'm terrible. <laughs> and that terrible part that you need to not, not be afraid to, to outsource. And then, yeah, and when you, when you stumble, then change, uh, figure out why did you stumble, why, why, why something didn't happen, and then uh, learn from mistakes and, uh, and never give up. Okay, so it kind of sounds like there's two qualities. One of them is being persistent, and the other one is problem solving. So you don't necessarily have to be like a specialist in all the fields or generalist. It's impossible. But if you know what you're lacking, what you're missing, yes. you acknowledge, okay, I, I can't do this myself, but I know that I can find somebody who can. So that's like problem solving. Yes, no, I, yeah, sure, but problem solving is definitely, but, but to recognize, because, uh, and it, okay. uh, again, on, on the personality, to recognize that good entrepreneur doesn't mean being good at everything. It, it means that being recognizing actually where you are not that good. Mm. And then uh, it's easier because then you are at least honest that this is not my strongest, uh, strongest part. So I'm going to figure out some, some, somebody else who can actually fill in with, within that role. Okay. And my absolute last question. Why did you choose to like, start your studies or study in Riga Business School's executive MBA program? Well, you know, um, I have already one master's, and uh, but it was ten years old. Then uh, we talk quite a lot of with the businesses that you have to, uh, I don't know, this upskilling process. Currently, on the modern era, is uh, that you have to learn all the time. So I figured out it's unfair that I ask to for the businesses that you have to go to mini MBA if I haven't finished uh, recently myself. And then, because otherwise, uh, otherwise this is, uh, is not fair that I ask for the businesses, hey, you have to go, there's a Scrum, Agile, Prince, whatever methodology uh, that you have to learn and you have to use it, but, but I would not understand myself. That, that makes no sense. So this is why you lead by example. So if I can manage uh, this, uh, were worthless uh, being in uh, in uh, well I have to manage 300 people and still f finishing executive MBA I know everybody can do that so at that that perspective I, I when I told mm. talk to the entrepreneurs and they say I have a lot of st stuff to do uh, I know but you can make time because this is possible so they can do it if I can do it they can do it Amazing. Great answer. <laughs> I have nothing to comment on that. Yeah, thank you everybody for watching and uh, see you next year. <laughs> thank you, Caspers, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.